Hello and welcome back to Michelle on Your Shoulder. Day 32. The Incredible Lightness of Loving. These daily devotions are from my upcoming book, God is Good, a 40-day walk with scripture. The scriptural selections and passages are from Compass, the study Bible for navigating your life by Ecclesia Bible Study. The link can be found below. The reading for the day comes from 1 John 5, verses 1 through 6. Everyone who trusts Jesus as the long-awaited anointed one is a child of God, and everyone who loves the Father cannot help but love the child fathered by him. Then how do we know if we truly love God's children? We love them if we love God and keep his commands. You see, to love God means that we keep his commands, and his commands don't weigh us down. Everything that has been fathered by God overcomes the corrupt world. This is the victory that has conquered the world, our faith. Who is the person conquering the world? It is the one who truly trusts that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus, the Anointed, is the one who came by water and blood, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. This is the word of the Lord. First entry after losing tank, the incredible lightness of loving. You see, to love God means that we keep his commands, and his commands don't weigh us down. Verse 3. Loving God, truly loving him, allows us freedom to keep his commands effortlessly. Following his commands becomes a natural way of being, done without conscious effort, without a need to remember and remind ourselves of his commands in order not to break them. We are not weighed down with restrictive pressure, but rather we feel lifted up, lifted above the problems and turmoil of this world. The more love and joy we feel, the lighter we feel, the more buoyant. The pitfalls and annoyances of this world bother us less. They still bother us sometimes, but they bother us less. We are better able to let go and let God, as the saying goes. Just as a water buoy floats on top of the water, even amid tempestuous storms, the heaviest of waves crashing down on it, that water buoy stays afloat. It rises above the passing squalls and storms. So too can we. This letter from John the Apostle was written from the seaside city of Ephesus the ruins of which can be found in modern-day Western Turkey. As with previous letters from John, this one is also written in his later years, to believers of that day and forward, the new and future generations of Christians not experiencing Christ firsthand, as he had. In this letter, John emphasizes love, the eternal love of God, love that is showered on his children. He encourages us, as his children, to do the same, to shower each other with love.
As John points out, everyone who loves God our Father and trusts Jesus as the anointed child of God cannot help but also love his children. Our Father. We are all his children in his eyes. This means our spiritual brothers and sisters just as well as our biological or adopted siblings. We do not choose them as our brothers and sisters. They just are. Just as our arm is part of our body, it is just there. We do not choose it. It is a part of us. Together, we are all part of God's family. We are all different parts of his body, just as our arms and legs and ankles and all the other different parts of us are part of our body. We love God. We love his children. We follow his commands. This means we love those who are different from us and we refrain from rushing to anger or fault finding. Instead, we learn to understand, to allow peace within us to dwell. We honor the love that true peace brings and recognize when anger or strife intrude. We allow the spirit of peace to permeate our every cell. The Spirit is the truth, the way. Peace and love from my heart to yours. How we treat the people around us on a daily basis is the real test of our love for God. Compass Study Bible Thank you for listening and being here today. May you have a day filled with love and encouragement. I'll be here tomorrow.